ਟਾਈਮ ਦੱਸਣਾ ਹੈ ਬਿਲਕੁਲ ਵੈਲਕਮ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਫॉर ਜੁਆਇਨਿੰਗ ਅਸ ਟੁਡੇ ਫॉर ਦ ਰੀਡਿੰਗ ਆਫ ਅਗਸਤਿਆ ਪਰਪਸ ਆਫ ਲਾਈਫ ਟੁਡੇਸ ਟੌਪਿਕ ਇਜ਼ ਵਾਈ ਕ੍ਰੀਏਸ਼ਨ ਗਤਰਤ ਸਵਾਮੀਗਲ ਆਸ ਪਰਮ ਗੁਰੂ ਡਿਵੋਟੀ ਆਫ ਦ ਐਬਸੋਲਿਊਟ I ask you humbly please tell us the secret of creation Sage Agastya says Om asking the absolute I will humbly respond to the secret of creation and listen with devotion No one can understand who the supreme being is who is he what kind of form does he have what is his beginning what is his end all this cannot be even imagined by people rishis like me or even the one who created him now this particular paragraph can be very confusing unless you pay full attention to it what gajra swamigal is asking is who is the supreme being and appa agastya is explaining that and he is beginning to tell us about it and he is saying the one who created him which means we are not talking about the creation or the absolute of the uh, as the creation which is that which which is the reason the entire creation exists we are talking about the first supreme being so that is where he says all this cannot even be imagined by people rishis like me or even the one who created him one thing certain is that there is something called the supreme being or the absolute so now so far even i had thought the absolute is the creator the the source of creation but now i'm beginning to understand as i'm reading this with you today that creation the source of creation is also different from the absolute and that is one of the lessons we are learning from this particular topic this is because it is certain that all the living beings that he created and the several crore gods that protect them exist so what am i saying is we know for a certain certainty that there is a supreme being or the absolute because everything that is we have been created exist so again here we have to remember this he say all the living beings that he has created which is all of us and other living things but he also talks about the crore of gods that protect them so are we just talking about the hindu gods no what he is talking about is the powerful energies that we call as gods who are there to help protect the created world Hey, Jagastya says, so why did he create gods, demons, and living beings like humans? When did he create? Why did he create? Aren't these questions that are digging into the very truth of creation? So he says, your question, that's all, Swami Gal, you're trying to dig into the very source of creation, which is beyond human language, beyond human capacity of understanding. and then he proceeds to continue to explain several micro materials were emitted from the supreme being when it became conscious this that which was emitted was spiritual knowledge it was eager to reveal its meaning this knowledge because it was part of the supreme is called jivatma or the soul again i am going to read this passage again and so so sumati as soon as you are ready you can let me know and you can continue reading i am ready i am ready okay would you repeat that several micro materials yeah sure several micro materials were emitted from the supreme being when it became conscious that which was emitted was spiritual knowledge it was eager to reveal its meaning 
This knowledge, because it was part of the Supreme, is called Jivatman or the soul. This is a very, very, very important paragraph in this particular chapter. Here there are so many layers of meaning. The first thing he says is, several micro materials were emitted from the Supreme Being. So now we have the source of creation, the first Supreme Being, and then he's talking about the micro materials that were emitted from the Supreme Being. And he says, that which was emitted was the spiritual knowledge, jnana, as we call it in Hindu terms. It was eager to reveal its meaning. This knowledge, because it was part of the Supreme, is the Jivatman or the soul. So what do we understand from this? We have micro materials, because he says Jivatman or the soul. Right now, all of us know that each one of us has a soul. So he's saying that every small micro material that was emitted or from the Supreme Being is the soul and that which was emitted was the spiritual knowledge. So when we are talking about liberation or you know finding mukti, what is it we are talking about? We are talking about self-realization or God-realization. So we are talking about realizing what we are. I hope I'm making um, sense here because it's a very difficult concept to wrap your mind around. So we, the soul, is knowledge. When we realize that we are knowledge, we become liberated. And it says it was eager to reveal its meaning. So why creation? When the soul was emitted from the supreme being, it was knowledge and it wanted to express. It wanted to reveal its own, own essence. This knowledge, because it was part of the supreme, is called Jivatman or the soul. So why creation is being told in this particular paragraph? Expression and experience. So everything that is prevalent in creation is based on these two concepts of knowledge. Please continue, Sister Samadhi. Yeah. So in order for the soul to express its knowledge, it needs a body. That form was given by creation. This needed a body consisting of the five elements of light, air, water, fire, earth and ether. However, this body needed another body to encase it. Hence, two types of bodies known as the man and woman were created. Now, how does the soul express itself? How does it reveal its own meaning? It needs a vehicle. So that is why a body consisting of the five elements of light, air, water, fire, earth and ether was created. But so how was this? Uh, this body also needed the man and the woman to make it happen, to continue the whole human species as we know it. I mean, in uh, other uh, chapters, Appa talks about other planes of existence, but we will not, other worlds, but we will not talk about it now. It will get more confusing. But basically, he's saying is a body was needed, and hence they created two bodies one was man and woman. And this kind of confirms to what we know from the Christian, uh, you know, uh, background of Adam and Eve. So, creation is the same, whether whatever religion we follow, there's always why creation? What is the source of creation? Who is the absolute? And from the absolute, we come out. And for all those spiritual elements or microcosm, as we, we are known, we needed a body to express. So that is what Appa is talking about. Go ahead. Yeah. In order to create the body, Brahma was created. Giving Brahma the power to create, it also made another divine power known as Shiva 
that could protect this. Vishnu was created to punish those humans that violated the law. These three gods in turn, in order to conduct their work with loyalty, created different gods. Again, Half if, of, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. sorry. In this again, he says, okay, he is now talking in terms of Hindu background. But we must understand no matter what religion we are in, creation is one, creating principle is one, and all that happens in creation is equal. We just understand it with different names based on our um, you know, religious or ethnic backgrounds. So if you think of all this as powers and attribute different names to it, it's the same type of power, whether you're a Hindu, Muslim, Christian, Jew, or anything. So what he's saying is Brahma was created so that uh, he had the power to create more. Okay. Now, then he says, Shiva was to protect this. Now, I had a question before this uh, meeting even started by uh, Sister Veena. And she was like, you know, Shiva is the destroyer and Vishnu is the uh, sustainer. So this is wrong. I said, no. You must always see why Appa is particularly saying something very specifically. If you look at Shiva, you don't see Shiva punishing anybody. He is always known as the benevolent God. He is the one who gives, uh, you know, boons without even questioning why. But Vishnu, if you see, he assumes different avatars to punish the wrongdoers. So that is what Appa is talking about. And then he says, these three powers created more gods, more divine power to continue their work. Go ahead, please. Yeah, half of Shiva emerged to become Parvati, the personification of power. With their divine powers, Shiva and Shakti created Ganapati and Muruga. To help with the work they do, they created several Ganas or elementals. In the same way, Saraswati, the giver of knowledge, emerged from the creator Brahma and Lakshmi emerged from Vishnu. In the olden days, people created interesting stories based on their imagination and gave those stories to us as Puranas. It was like this, that gods, demons, humans and other living things were created. The source of all this is the light of knowledge called the Supreme Being or Parabrahman. Thank you. So now he is talking about, okay, first there's the, the source of creation. Then the absolute, the supreme being, then he creates the three main powers of creation, sustenance, and uh, destruction, destruction. So we can call them Vishnu, Brahma, and Shiva in our Hindu context. And they in turn have their feminine principle in terms of Shakti and, and Lakshmi and Saraswati. And then they further create more Gana, uh, uh, gods like Munga and each having a different attribute. But ultimately he comes back to saying the source of all this is the light of knowledge called the Supreme Being or Bharat Brahman. Once again so Appa Agastya continues to say in Agastya Vadipadu, knowledge, the word knowledge continues to uh, crop up. Why is he saying that? When we start going beyond the idea of forms, when we start remembering why creation to express and experience to because we are all knowledge each one of us is a jivatma that is why it is called you know the soul is is a element of knowledge of the supreme power the microcosm of the macrocosm then that is why we have all these layers of existence think about it you go to sleep you're one person, right? But in the, in the dream, think about all the different things that happen. So what is it that we are dreaming? Who is the dreamer? And then when you wake up, you realize none of these exist. But in the dream, you experience pain and fear and joy. So if you start thinking in these terms of the, the creation in these terms of what you're seeing, as in your dream, you will understand that creation 
and all that exists is all just energy and vibration. It's consciousness. It's different levels of consciousness. The growth of the energy, the growth of the vibration, more physical and real everything seems. The higher the energy, the higher the vibration, then the understanding of a true nature starts emerging from within us. Mr. Smriti? Yeah. <clears throat> so far, I have explained about the creation of living things. Now, let us look at another question. The explanation for why he created it. So far, no one has been able to give an explanation to the secret. Ask why? Who will you ask? We cannot ask the Supreme Being and get the answers. This is because we do not have the necessary tools required to ask or hear the Absolute. That is why all this is called the desireless desire or divine play. So Those in, non... Yeah. Yeah. So in Hinduism, that is why we call it Maya or the desireless desire because as I already explained before, the human body as such, which is already the created principle, does not have the capacity nor the knowledge to understand the very source of the creation, which is the absolute or the supreme being. It is beyond our limited human understanding. For the one, like a Ramana Maharishi, who, can, who understood this, he could not communicate it to us. He can explain a lot of other things. All the great ones are able to explain everything. Even Rishi Maharishi Agastya is able to explain everything. But this communication of what the Supreme Being is, nobody can express or explain because it is beyond the capacity of the human mind or human consciousness. But as we go further and further on the spiritual path, there will come a time when you understand why creation, what is the source of creation and what, how this is all just consciousness and how this is all Maya. And then the, that is when the idea of the desireless desire begins to make sense. And for me, the, the, the picture of Anantashayana like laying there in, in, in sleep and the creation coming from his navel, the bird, is a beautiful depiction of what Apagastya is saying. See, what symbolism there is behind every um, form or uh, idea that was created in the Puranas and given to us, uh, we are seeing in the temples, there is some deeper meaning behind that. And that is what we need to understand. So if you start thinking of comparing creation to your dreams, it slowly starts making sense. Go ahead, Sister Sina. Yeah. <clears throat> Those non-living things like stones and soil, microorganisms with minute forms, plants, trees, animals were all created by the power of divine creation. All of these have souls and form. But it is only the human that has the complete faculties of mind, intellect or discrimin discriminatory powers. That is why birth as a human is very important. Now, God. Here, mm. I'm sorry. Here, Apagasti is saying even the microorganisms, even the stones, the everything, everything is created by the power of the divine. So everything has a soul, even those tiny things and form. Now, if you go back and look at a lot of discover or uh, discoveries by the scientists, we can only say to them discoveries because it's knowledge that is already existing, but they are discovering it. They're beginning to understand that plants can be affected by how we, uh, you know, treat them. There, there is, a, there was a uh, experiment done by some scientists where they had somebody just hold the plant. It actually happened, and the plant started drooping and shrinking. And then there was another where they started, you know, uh, uh, being very loving to plants, and they started really blooming and. You know, there was actually one person uh, I know in here in Clovis, where I live. Her name is Tammy Lee Anderson, a very beautiful spiritual being. And she had an event in a house, and she has a small a lotus pond. 
and she said the day before I went to her house, you know, the the they were one of few uh, of the birds, but they were not really at the position where they would bloom the next day. But the very next morning when we went there, everything was in full bloom at the same time. And I asked her, how did this happen? She said, I asked them. I asked them to bloom for this occasion. So we must understand everything has a soul. Everything can respond to us. So even when I go and pluck a plant, a, a fruit from a tree, I always thank the, the tree. In the olden days, primitive man knew this. He always used to thank the animals before killing them so that he could eat them. So we must understand everything that has been created has a soul. That is why any violence against anything, whether it's an animal, is not good. Now he also says, human is the only um, soul that has the faculties of mind, intellect, and discriminatory powers. Because if you look at the animal world, they 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 are born, they kill because they have to kill. No English, Urdu. No English, please Urdu. Mr. Uber Malik, thank you for joining us. Please mute your phone. Thank you. Please mute your phone. Okay. So, when we're talking about animals, they do what they do because it's their nature. But we as humans have discriminatory powers. Thank you. Go ahead, Sister Smith. Yeah. Gods too are souls like humans. However, they do not have forms like humans. That is why they assume the form of human and live in the manifested world and then ridding the form in the manifested world, they return to the upper world as an epitome of knowledge, as epitome of soul and power and become gods. God gains form based on the imagination that emerges from the human. Now, what Appal is saying again is something that none of us have heard before. He says, gods are like human. But they do not have forms like humans. So when I, this was a concept that I first learned when I went to the Lopa Mudra Agasti Ashram in Banergata Road in Bangalore. There was a Swami there called Shank Shankar, Swami Shankar. And he was the one who, when my father first went to uh, see him, said, go around the Agastya temple. And when he did, Apa then, uh, Apa Agastya spoke to Gajdal Swami for the first time. And there, Swami Shankar told us, the deities are all around, they do not have forms. And that was the first time that I heard about it. But as I read Bali Padu, I realized everything that is a divine power does not have form. However, what gives it the form is our idea of what they are like. So, any human with the correct uh, you know, uh, abilities can create a form, give it a name, and the deity will assume that form and appear in that form to that person. So that is why we have countless crores of gods in Hinduism. And we must understand if they're nothing but just divine energies, that are highly, highly purified souls which are here to help us progress and help us help protect us in this created world. Another thing he says is they assume the form of the human, live in the manifested world, and retain the form in the manifested world, they return to the upper world as an epitome of knowledge. So they too come to this earth and they have existed and they become purified and return with that knowledge that helps them serve the humans. So again, we are understanding one more thing, which is knowledge. Knowledge becomes the basis of everything. And in one of the other chapters, Appa says, gods do not have the, uh, the freedom that human beings have to return to the absolute because they're bound by duty. They're bound by duty to help creation and the created beings. So until the Mahapralaya, after the four yugas, as Hinduism talks about, they need to remain. 
they cannot leave. So, so do all these rishis. Many of them returned, but many stayed back to help humanity. So we, when we look at Ganesha or Muruga or Shiva, or if we talk of God as Christ or Allah, we must always remember they're all divine forms, energies. And that is what Islam is beautiful. It talks about God as energy because they've just gone straight to the source. But that doesn't mean any other religion is any less. Because each human being has a different capacity of understanding, so that we have different uh, religions, but all of them lead to the same creator, the same source of creation. So we must understand when we are looking at the gods that they are doing the greatest sacrifice by remaining to serve human beings, to continue to help us progress on this path of spirituality. So this soul that has come into this body which was a, a emerged, emerged from the macrocosm, this microcosm, this soul is here to experience, express, and realize. And once we realize, we go to self-realization, God-realization, and we become Jeevan Mukta, liberated by living because we understand why creation, why we were created, how we must live, because we know what causes suffering, how to go beyond all that and understand everything is nothing but the divine play. So this particular chapter has to be read and read it and read it. And as we do, Appa will continue to show, give us layers and layers of meaning. So any other thoughts on this? Any questions? Brother Karpan Swami, Sister Sumati, Sister Geeta, anybody, anyone else, please do so. Well explained, uh, sister. Well explained, actually. It's, a, it's all energy, actually. It's our consciousness, actually. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's very difficult to explain because, you know, we are so used to the forms. We are so used to the ideas that are created in Puranas. But we must understand Puranas were created as easy to remember stories because they have this supreme truth hidden within them. As you said, maybe perhaps this is why they have, you know, like in Hinduism, they have uh, four sages, Sarye uh, Kriya Yogam Jnanam. As they go and evolve higher and higher, uh, they, there will be a point where they will start realizing themselves, the owner will. Right. And that is one of the reasons Apagasya says, why do you need another form when the light, that is knowledge yes. is you? So we must remember we are all divine because we have emitted from that one source. None of us are any different from the other because we are all part of the same creation. We have the same capacity that the divine has because a drop of water in the ocean has the same essence of the ocean. So we must start realizing our divine self. So how can we do that? By living the righteous path, by doing the right things, by understanding why suffering, understanding why we create karma and Stopping all that by understanding, by and and then the consciousness starts rising to a higher and higher level. Yes. Sister I have one, yeah, one question. Five elements I understood, but there's one more ether. Uh, yeah, it basically it is uh, like a, a space water, fire, and these things are all, I don't know exactly what term they use in uh, other Indian languages, but all this, uh, the body is comprised of all these elements, and that's all that I'm uh, explaining, but I don't know an exact word for that in other languages, but what I will do is, I will try to find the, the word and then try to explain it in the next meeting. Yeah, probably what was the Tamil word, I think uh, that would help. That's correct. So we'll back, mm -hmm. go back and look at it and figure it out. Sister Geeta Shetty, any thoughts? Yes? What about prana? Prana energy, it is there from the yeah. beginning of time. Uh, yeah, prana is itself energy. Prana, what does prana mean? Prana is energy. So 
as i said everything is energy the created world is energy it's just that it vibrates in different levels the grosser the the energy then the body manifests the different elements manifest the higher the energy the soul the pure soul that is we call prana manifest so energy is the same it it sustains this creation in at all levels without that there would be no creation so energy is required whether it is in the grosser level or a higher vibration level and because of that we see each other we see the world around us but prana is nothing in terms of understanding it as the soul is nothing but a higher uh, energy or energy vibrating at a purer level thank you thank you brother and you know this is so important because even if we don't understand completely these kind of questions make us start thinking and as we think appa starts revealing these answers to us so we will continue to do this in the next uh, reading sister sumati is there anything else you would like to add uh, i think we are short of time now thank you all for joining and you know when you read avisar balipadu know that it is not coming from a human being it's not it is coming directly from appa and each like we said energy exists in everything energy exists in the words energy exists in in our voice so that is why we are in hinduism we have all the hymns and and the mantras because we understand the potency of these the energies the sound vibrations so even in the words that are given in bhagavad gita the upanishads the vedas or even agastya valipadu we must remember there is energy higher energy speaking to us directly but again